12. So we are looking at the redemption night of Israelites in Egypt. Israel, or uh, the Israelites, went there when they were only 70 as a family. And this is a night when they were just about to come out as a nation. Praise the name of the Lord. They went in as a family and they were welcomed because one of their own, Joseph, was there. You remember? Amen. And they grew and they grew and there was a king that arose that did not know <laughs> Joseph. Hallelujah. And because they were growing and they were doing so well, the Egyptians decided to oppress them. And they became slaves for a long, long time. And they prayed to God and God had them. And now this is a time when God is about to take them out of Egypt. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's look at verse 1. I'm just going to go very quickly through the verses. You know how I teach only Bible. The Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. Amen. Who was spoken to? Moses and, and Aaron. For the deliverance of the, Egypt, for, for, of the Israelites from Egypt. You see, God speaks to men. Amen. The Lord spoke to Moses and he also spoke to Aaron. If you thought God didn't, wasn't speaking to Aaron, he was also speaking to Aaron. Amen. So the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. And verse 2, the Bible says, This month, this month, this month shall be unto you the beginning of the months. It shall be the first month of the year. That was not their new year. But now God is about to create a new year for them. Hallelujah. They were to convert that month of the year, I'm not going to go into the details of telling you whether it was January or it was December. <laughs> but that month which they were in was now going to be their new year. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Because of something that was going to happen that, that day and that night. Hallelujah. So God was be going to orient their whole future by their redemption from Egypt. I want to tell people today why I teach a lot about salvation. Why I teach a lot about being born again. Because God considers it to be so important. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. That it even took the days and the months of the year needing change. Look at that. The Bible says, this month shall be unto you the beginning. <laughs> It shall be the beginning for you. I don't know where you are in your life. But I want to tell you where you began. The day you gave your life to Jesus Christ. When you got born again. And if you are not yet born again, that is where life begins. To be born again. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the symbolism of this coming out of Egypt is the new life that you're receiving in Christ Jesus Christ. So this is going to be, this for them was the new start. It was a new start. It was a new beginning for them. They were going to go in a different direction. They were coming out from a certain place. They were going to a new place. A place there where they'll only be with him, God, and them. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't this the scripture saying, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Hallelujah. The old is gone and the new has come. Just because they were going to be new people. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were going to be new. It's the same way we also are created anew. The old goes and the new has come. The Bible says that we have been taken out of the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let me tell you, everything changes from the beginning of that new spiritual life. And I pray that someone's calendar, to, calendar today will change. If it had not changed your orientation, your days are going to change. Verse 3, the Bible says, Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel. Talk to them, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their father. Amen. So God has given words 
to Moses and Aaron. It's the same way God has given us words to tell you, <laughs> hallelujah, as men of God, praise the Lord. And these are the words of God. He says, as that time he was telling them, speak ye unto the congregation. In the tenth day, in the tenth day, in the tenth day of the month, that new month now, you shall take, take them, every man a lamb, according to the house of their father, a lamb for a house. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, one lamb, one house. God tells them, take every man a lamb for a house. Every man. Amen. Men munanisikia. Every man, spiritual work. Nikazianani? Yenu. Says, every man according to the house of their fathers. A lamb for what? For one house. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, in Genesis, we see, in Genesis chapter 3, we see Adam and Eve being clothed with a what? With a skin. There's an animal which died then. That was a lamb for an individual. Here we want to see, or we are seeing a lamb for a house. It says, every man, a lamb for what? A house, a family. Later on in the book of Leviticus, we'll be going through, I'm just giving you a summary. There'll be a lamb that will be killed for what? The whole nation. Praise the Lord. And finally, John speaks of a lamb for the whole world. His name is Jesus Christ. I just want you to guys to see who Jesus is and where all this story is coming from. The whole story is about who? Jesus Christ. Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we are actually talking about Jesus, but let's look at this time when a lamb was being killed for the family. So every man was to take a lamb for the family. So they were supposed to have a family gathering, and within that family gathering, they were supposed to celebrate. They were supposed to kill that lamb, and the lamb for their meal that they were supposed to eat together. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. This lamb, yes, it was supposed to be a lamb for their meal, for their sustenance. And it was also going to be a lamb for something different. Because something was about to happen that night. It was to be a lamb as a sacrifice that they are to, be, to offer to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 4, the Bible says, And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor Next unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. So they are saying that if the house is so small, maybe if you have two or three people like myself or four, hallelujah. So the smaller families were to gather or combine with other small families. Praise the Lord. To ensure that the lamb is wholly, totally consumed. To ensure that the whole lamb is what? Is gone. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this was a corporate affair. The lambs were sufficient enough for the household. You know, I actually went ahead and tried to find out these lambs. Because these lambs that were being killed, you look at verse 5, it says, Your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year. A lay male of the first year was when the lamb was in its prime. Praise the name of the Lord. Really, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's now mature. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And this lamb, at that uh, uh, weight, I went to check and I actually realized the lambs would weigh about 20 to 30 kgs. I don't know about, about that, but about 20 to 30 kgs. I actually went ahead and calculated because I like meat. Praise the name of the Lord. So this was a lot of meat. And actually the total number of people gathered in such, uh, uh, the minimum number of people in such a gathering will be about 10 people. Or the Bible says this. And your lamb shall be without blemish. These are now this kind of description of this lamb. A male of the first year and you shall take it out from the lamb, from, from the sheep and from the goats. So look at that. Without blemish, meaning perfect, meaning without defect, 
meaning healthy, praise the name of the Lord. When you look at it, both inside and outside, in the appearance of the animal was supposed to be without blemish. Perfect in order for it to be accepted as a sacrifice. Because it was not just a meal to be eaten, but it was a sacrifice. And guess what? This speaks of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Bible says he was born a holy thing. Luke chapter 1. Born a holy thing. Praise the name of the Lord. And he lived a life without sin. He did not sin. He did not sin. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 that when Jesus, him being as a high priest who has gone through all these temptations that we've gone through, yet without sin. That is Jesus, the perfect one. That lamb speaks of Jesus and Jesus, Jesus Christ alone. He knew no sin. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, him who knew no sin was made to be seen for us. Hallelujah. That we might be made what? The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we are still talking about Jesus. Now this lamb was Jesus Christ. John said, behold the lamb. Behold, see the lamb. And I want you guys today, as you look at this scripture in Exodus, see that this lamb they are talking about was actually a picture of Jesus that was going to come. A male lamb. Jesus was a male. Praise the name of the Lord. Of the first year, very prime in his early age. You shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats. So this lamb... On the tenth day, God has come to them when? On when? Yeah? Of the month. They shall take it on the tenth day of the month. The Bible says, you shall take it from the sheep and from the goats. You remember when Jesus came to Jerusalem? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. That was on the tenth day of that month when they were celebrating the Passover in Israel. That is when Jesus came and was presented before them, before the temple. I'm just showing you some few things because I want to get to the verse where I'm teaching today. Verse 6, the Bible says, And you shall keep it until the 14th day. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Hallelujah. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Which month? The month of the Passover. And then the Bible says, And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So this... Uh, 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 animal, this lamb is taken from the rest of the sheep separated, the same way Jesus came to Jerusalem and he went to the temple because lambs were actually presented, you know, to the temple praise the name of the Lord and they were set aside and kept aside and, and that keeping aside you know, for, for lamb, that lamb to be a sacrifice will mean that it has stayed with you and you have developed some, you know something for it, hallelujah it has been now become a pet <laughs> praise the name of the Lord so they selected the lamb on the, on the 10th, and they were to sacrifice the lamb on the 14th day, just like Jesus Christ. Look at that. This is just a picture of who? Jesus. A picture of what Jesus was coming to do, guys. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Similar to Jesus. Similar to Jesus. Do you remember in Luke chapter 19, when some Sadducees, Pharisees, who went to look at Jesus, to inspect Jesus. They wanted to actually discredit him. Praise the name of the Lord. And he came out innocent. And even finally, you remember? <laughs> Jesus, I have no fault in him. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So the lamb was to be killed in the evening. Actually, the uh, interpretation is in the afternoons in the afternoon between 12 and 6 p.m. That was the time of the killing. What time did Jesus die on the cross? 3 p.m. What time was he put on the cross? 9 a.m. And then at 12, what happened? Darkness came for three hours, and then Jesus died at 3 p.m. This is good knowledge for we Christians to know. Because you go to Naimba to Apa, oh, Easter, 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 Easter. And you do not know what actually happened on that day. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> so Jesus hung on the cross at 9 a.m. and died at 3 p.m. Speaking again of the same time the lambs were killed. And you see, the Bible says the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Just about the same time. 
just about the same time lambs were being sacrificed at the temple. And it is so amazing to me when I look at that time when Jesus was dying on the cross. And there were some priests. There were some priests who were actually sacrificing lambs <laughs> at the same time in the temple. Yet the whole point was who? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, verse 7. The Bible says, and they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two sides, two side posts. Amen. And the upper door post of the upper door post of the houses where in they shall eat it. So they took the blood. Amen. They didn't just let the blood scatter. You know, some of you, I know you've seen lambs or animals being sacrificed. Praise the Lord. Even some in your homes, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Even for rituals, some of you, you know what I'm talking about. The Bible says that you shall take the blood. You, in other words, they collected the blood. So they would put that blood in some basin and would take some, uh, uh, it's called high soap. And they'd use that high soap to apply on the upper door post, on the side posts of the door, those side posts, and then the upper, the upper door post. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Do you know this, this must have been an act of faith? The Bible says, strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the upper post, door post of the house wherein they shall eat. So they would apply the blood and that blood application will be a symbol of something that was coming. Hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. I want to tell you that this was an act of faith. Something was about to come. Something was coming to hit their land that day. It actually didn't make sense how the blood of Jesus, the blood of the lamb during that time will protect them from that vibe, evil vibe that was coming that evening. Hallelujah. For you to know and to do it, you must have believed. You must have believed. The Bible says in verse 8, and they shall eat of the flesh. They shall eat of the flesh, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Unleavened bread. <laughs> Speaking of Jesus again. Hallelujah. Because leaven speaks of what? Of sin. Jesus was without sin. Praise the name of the Lord. So that day they were to eat the flesh, roast with fire, and unleavened bread. I'm going to talk about the flesh later. Unleavened bread. Praise the name of the Lord. So this one is speaking of who? Sin. And Jesus lived a life without what? Sin. Now the Bible talks about the bitter herbs. It says, and with bitter herbs they shall eat. This is speaking of what? This is speaking of the suffering that they had gone through Egypt during that time. Verse 9, it says, And eat not of it raw, nor sodden, nor boiled with water, but roast with fire his head and his legs, and with the putrans, putenance thereof. So they were to eat it roasted, not boiled, not cooked. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, when it's eaten roasted, everything is within. Every nutrient that is required stays, has, stays within the roast, the roasted meat when you eat it. The Bible says, with his heads, with his legs, together. Hallelujah. The Bible says that no bones of Jesus were what? Were broken. None of his bones were broken. Speaking of who? Jesus Christ. I want someone to see Jesus today. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus, as the bread and the living bread, he's called himself, I am the bread of life. Hallelujah. He's the same one who said, eat my body and drink my blood in John chapter 6. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember, even during the crucifixion, they wanted to quick, quicken the deaths of the three, the, the two thieves and Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Sabbath was coming, and the Sabbath will begin at the evening. Amen. It was already going, approaching 3 p.m., but when they came to the cross, they found Jesus dead. They broke the bones of the others, but Jesus' bones were intact, just as this animal. <laughs> they were supposed to just, this, you know, uh, uh, um, cut the animal, 
but no bones. Everything was supposed to remain intact. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that in verse 10. Let's look at verse 10. And you shall let nothing of it remain until morning. Nothing to remain. It was supposed to be totally consumed. That's why the, the families came together and combined together in one sitting. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, and when anything was left, the Bible says that that which remained of it till the morning it was supposed to be burned with fire. They were not supposed to leave anything. And that is still speaking of Jesus Christ. Isn't it Jesus at the cross who said that it is finished? And nothing, nothing was left. Verse 11. And thus shall ye eat of it with your loins garden, guarded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hands and you shall eat of it in haste and it is the Lord's supper. Hallelujah. Loins guarded is because they were, they, were, they were putting on long robes. So they had to, you know, prepare the robes to, you know, pull them up eh, so that they are ready to go out. And then the Bible says, your shoes on your feet, meaning you are ready to go anytime, ready to go, and your staff in the hand, and you shall eat it in haste. Praise the name of the Lord. Be this is speaking of us the same way we are anticipating the coming of Jesus Christ. You are anticipating the return of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Then he says, it is the Lord's, the Lord's Supper, not, not the pastor's supper, not the priest's supper, the Lord's Supper. Now, this is where I wanted to get. The Bible says, for I will pass, God is now telling them, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborns in the land of Egypt both man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. Why? Because I am the Lord. So God now says, I am passing by. All those things you are doing, all the things that I've just told you, God was saying that I am passing by. That's why you need to do all those things that you have spoken to you to do. I am passing by. God said, I will pass by. Praise the name of the Lord. It was certain something was going to happen that night. I will. <laughs> God was coming himself. I will pass by. Praise the Lord. No change, no prayer was going to change that. Nothing was going to avert God's coming. The day of judgment had arrived. Hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. And God was coming, the Bible says, to the land of Egypt. And he says, I will, I will, I will pass by Egypt this night. And let me tell you, when God says something, it is true. It is going to happen. Praise the name of the Lord. And says, and when I come, I will smite. I will smite all the firstborns of the land of Egypt, both the land, both the, uh, the man, man and beast. No animal was spared. If you go down, down, you will see no animal, firstborn animal was spared. And no firstborn man was spared. Everyone was taken out. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord, because judgment had come. And let me tell you guys, judgment is coming. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, this judgment that you are seeing coming, something already happened with Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was at the cross, something happened. It was God's judgment that was taken by Jesus on the cross. Judgment, 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 judgment. Hallelujah. Why? Because of the sin. Of mankind. This time it was because of the sin of Egypt. Look at it. It says, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. Both in the physical realm and in the spiritual realm, judgment was executed. And it is God who executed judgment in Egypt, in the land of Egypt during that time. There were nine plagues during that time. And if you look at every plague, it was God telling the Egyptians, their gods mean nothing. They had a frog god. They had a god of the river. 
And all those other plagues represented a god that the Egyptians used to worship. And the Bible says God was coming to judge against all the gods of Egypt. He was going to execute judgment. All the gods were to be dealt with. <laughs> Pharaoh, Pharaoh himself actually called himself a god. He was a god incarnate to the Egyptians. They believed the Pharaoh, Pharaoh line, the Pharaoh family was actually a god. Remember when, when, when Moses went to Pharaoh and what did, what, did, what did Pharaoh say? Who is this God? Who is this God you are talking about? I'm the, I'm, I am him. <laughs> Which God is this you are talking about? And now the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, our God, was going to judge during that night. He was going to prove to the Egyptians, I am the Lord and I am the God of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> The, the, the Egyptians' minds were to be turned from trusting those small gods, amen, to trusting the living God and the only true God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God said, I will pass through the land. And I want to tell you guys, the day when Jesus was put on the cross, there was judgment that took place. Judgment took place. The Bible says, and the wages of sin is death. Wages of sin is death. And when Jesus, Jesus came at the cross, judgment took place. Judgment for sin. You remember the Bible says that Jesus said, cried, cried, oh, Father, Father, why do you forsake me? Because judgment was on him. Judgment for us was on who? Was on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And don't forget, he says, against all the gods of Egypt, even the enemy was judged. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> over your life, his power over your life. The Bible says he was, his power he was put to naught. Hallelujah. His power over our lives was put to naught. His hold over our lives was put to naught. His authority over our lives was put to naught. If you are waiting for redemption, let me tell you, your redemption took place 2,000 years ago. Amen. Hallelujah. It's now for you to believe it. Hallelujah. <laughs> as certain as it happened in Egypt, it is as certain as it happened when Jesus Christ died for our sins. Look at that. He says, how many gods of Egypt? All of them. All the gods. How many? All the gods. All the gods, all the devils, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> and now he has given us authority and power over all the authority and the power of the enemy. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Verse 13, you see the whole point, he says in verse 12, I am, I am the Lord. Verse 13, and the blood shall be to you. <laughs> And the blood shall be to who? To you. And the blood shall be to who? To you. And the blood shall be assigned to you. It says, shall be a token for you upon the houses. And the blood of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus shall be assigned to us. Praise the name of the Lord. And the blood of Jesus shall be a token upon the houses where ye are. Our hearts, the doors of our hearts, the doors of our hearts. The Bible says, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. God says to you, my sign, the sign, the sign, that, the sign of the covenant is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of who? Jesus Christ. I'm speaking as relating to what happened with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? To them, during that time, the blood of the Lamb was the sign. Was the sign that they'd be safe. That they'd be kept safe. The blood was assigned to them. A token upon their houses. 
And you see, we are the temple of the living God. <laughs> we live in these temples, praise the Lord. In the doors of our hearts, praise the name of the Lord. Jesus says, below, we all that stand at the door and knock, the blood of Jesus is on us. Hallelujah. Now, God says, yes, it shall be a sign. You see the sign. It will be a reminder to you that I have taken your sin. I have taken your sin. Hallelujah. Because of the death of Jesus at the cross. He says, and me, for me, when I see the blood. Meaning it's also a sign to God. When God sees the blood, I will pass. He says, I will pass over you. Let me tell you guys, it is the blood of Jesus that God wants to see. It is the blood of Jesus. <laughs> no blood, no forgiveness. Hebrews chapter 9 verse uh, 22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. No forgiveness. Actually, it says no remission. Remission means cancellation. Sin being canceled. Not just being forgiven. You know, you can be forgiven and it's still there. No, this time it's wiped out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. John chapter 1, verse 29. Behold the Lamb of God that takes, 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 takes away. <laughs> Meaning you don't have it anymore. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's not your good works that God wants to see. It's the blood. He says, when I see the blood, it's not your nice prayer that God wants to see. It is the blood of Jesus. <laughs> it's not the, the good work that you do for God. It is the blood of Jesus. The blood of his son. And I pray that someone will see that today in Jesus' name. However, the, however bad the blood looks. You know, sometimes the, bad, the, the blood looks so bad. You know, when you look at blood on the floor, it doesn't look good. But you know, it is a sign of how bad our sin was. It, 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 it caused our lives. It cost the life of Jesus Christ. It was to cost our life. And let me tell you, judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. The Bible says, The wrath of God still abides to them that have refused to believe. But for those who are believing the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus has taken the judgment away. God, the Bible says, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. It says, And the plague... <laughs> So when God was come, the Bible says, the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. This is why I'm so confident. This is where my confidence comes, comes from. He says, because the blood is there, the plague shall not come upon me to destroy me. This plague, some people believe actually it was the death, death angel that came because people died. Hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. So judgment was coming to Israel too. But Israel was separated from this judgment under the blood. Because there are houses, they were in the houses, and those houses, the blood was on the doorposts. So I'm thinking the angels would come and look at the doorpost <laughs> and walk away. And walk away. And walk away. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the blood was a sign that their payment has been, has been made. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is what Jesus did for us. It was a sign that a substitute has already died for us. That is Jesus Christ. That is Jesus Christ. So they escaped the judgment of death by the application of the blood of Jesus. They had to believe what Moses had to say. And if there's someone here who does not believe what happened then, and does not believe what Jesus did at the cross of Jesus, then you may not be safe. But I'm telling you, the place to be safe is to be under the blood of Jesus. This is God's grace. This is God speaking to them, God telling them in advance, this is how you protect yourself. When we go out there and we preach the gospel of Jesus, we are telling people in advance, judgment is coming, but Jesus has already come to save us. And his blood, if you just believe, if you have, have faith in his blood, then you are safe. Praise the name of the Lord. And that blood becomes the symbol of protection. And you see, today we'll even celebrate the communion because it is a reminder of what happened. Praise the Lord. They came out safe, 
Therefore, we also come out safe. They came out delivered. We also come out delivered. <laughs> they came out with wealth. We also come out with what? Wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. You don't believe in wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. They came out healthy. <laughs> we are also coming out healthy. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever happened to them happens to us. When we believe in the Lord Jesus, when we believe that he died for our sin, when we believe that he took away all this sin for us, then we receive God's blessing, God's favor, God's health, uh, 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 health and vitality, goodness over our lives. That is where we receive it at the cross of Jesus. Not later on in the hands of the preacher, no, at the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Not later on in prayer, but when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you see, guys, I keep preaching about salvation. I keep preaching about being born again, again, and again, and I will keep on doing that. Because that is where your source is. That is where your life source is. That is where your strength is. That's where your power is. And I'm telling you, that is where the life of this church is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Even in this church, if the gods of Egypt were dealt with, I know the devil himself was dealt with at the cross of Jesus Christ. If all the gods of Egypt were dealt with, I know the devil and his cohorts and his demons were dealt with at the cross of Jesus and as I speak that, I feel it even right now. He was dealt with at the cross of Jesus. And if there's any devil influencing or interfering with someone's life today, in the name that is above every name, I command them to lose you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them free your life. Let them free your family. Let them free your finances. Let them free your health. Let them free everything that belongs to you. Because you belong to Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> the devil was defeated. And you have been set free. Hallelujah. You are free and free indeed. You have no cause and no reason to continue to fear the devil. He has been put to naught. He's a barking dog with no teeth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now go ye out there and prosper. Go ye and increase. Go ye and find favor with men and with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Everywhere you go. And you'll increase in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with men. Let's rise up in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory.